Have you ever wanted to, I don't know, slip into a coffin and go really fast in the air? Well, we're gonna get into this glass air and check it out on this episode of Taking Off. Socks. Okay, so you remember in the end of Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, Nerd Alert. Of all the souls I have encountered, his was the most. I hate the Wrath of Khan. Kind of feel like Spock when he got into the photon torpedo casing. Well, actually, he didn't get into it, but you know what I mean. No, I'm just kidding about all the claustrophobia stuff. Um, and actually, once I got in here and got my feet stretched out, it wasn't so bad, but just kind of getting in here originally, it's, t it's, uh, I mean, the glass there, looking at the outside, it's incredibly aerodynamic, right? But like you are in a photon torpedo tube in here. So it took you 20 years to build this. Well, 20 years with a 10 year hiatus. And then another, you've been flying it for 20 years. So you're over 40 years into this. Amazing. Actually, its first flight was in 2004, so we're a year off of 20 years, but close enough. Yeah, close enough. I'm a liberal arts major, not a math major. Okay. Yeah, you say that a lot, I've noticed. Yeah. It's so I get an excuse off the numbers. No, I understand. You don't have to, you can forgive me the math now. Okay, the first thing, well, first thing I'll do is this. Get that fired up. That's engine monitoring. Okay. Then I'm gonna pre-oil the engine. Which, that's pretty cool back there. You've got a pre-oiler. Uh, yep. You know. They use it in race cars. Notums, 130-foot crane, three miles south. Let's approach into runway 35. It's a big bird. Attentional aircraft, 5G Notums in effect, Rogden Airport. 130-foot crane. Service oh. Frequencies. Before departures, advise ground control. Dan doesn't get my humor. As an initial contact, you have information, Yankee. Experimental men are probably coming back to Ogden today. Uh, within an hour, 789 Delta Bravo. Roger. Why'd they ask that? Who knows? They're watching out for me when I come out of the canyons. They often ask that question. Do they? Yeah. I've never heard that before. Why would a tower ask if you're going to be coming back? Terminal glass air, 789 Delta Bravo, Ogden, Delay, Romeo 17, cleared for takeoff, left turn north, Ogden Canyon approved. 7800 Delta Bravo, cleared for runway 17, left turn, 7800 Delta Bravo. For track 243, traffic is a experimental glass air departing prior to arrival. Experimental 306 Golf Charlie, following assessed on a left base, close in for a full stop landing. Looking for traffic, 396 Golf Charlie. Act 6, extend down when I'll call your base. Extend down one, you'll call base, Act 6. Per track 668, Ogden Ground, runway 17, taxi via Alpha, Delta, cross runway 21 at Delta. Ogden Tower, Skyline 182 Fox Sierra, entering right down wind 17. 182 Fox Sierra, Ogden Tower, extend down one, I'll call your base. Extend down one, you'll call my base, Fox Sierra. Well, 396 Golf, Charlie, the Cessna Falls is just coming up over the numbers. They are full stop. Runway 17, clear, touch and go. Be prepared for a possible go around. Traffic inside. Act 6, follow the experimental. On uh, final to your left, they are touch and go. Number 2, runway 17, clear, touch and go. Follow the experimental. Number 2, clear, touch and go for 17, Act 6. Our station with Yankee, full stop. Do you want, you can fly it. Oh yeah, Okay, my air control. Yep, my control. We're heading to this canyon straight ahead. All right, and then we'll turn right and go up it. All right, I'm just gonna do a little quick maneuvering, just get a feel for it. Now this has the extended wing tips, which changes the roll rate. Yeah, I like, what I like is, um, I'm able to do some 
account for adverse yawn, really keep that nose forward easier than I can like in my Cessna. So the response is really good. Full stop, 6 up, Charlie. Yeah, I like the response. It's like a little sports car. Yeah. We don't have to worry about any uh, getting boxed in or anything? No. Nope. Uh, all right. The wind's from the south, so you're going to want to hug the north side. North side. Do I need to keep gaining altitude? Eh, not really. I feel like I'm going to be about 10,000 feet higher. We'll go through that pass very close to it. And a right base, runway 21, report a one mile right base. Fly east of the freeway, and our right base for 21, report right base. We're not too low? Yeah. We're going to skip. No, we're not. We'll skip through the pass. He just told us we're approved. Thanks, 7800, Bravo. You're plenty high. Okay. You'll call our base turn act 6. Terminal 6, call Charlie, turn your base, you're number 2, following a set on a half mile, follow full stop, runway 17, clear to land. 17, clear to land, uh, look and travel, 6, up Charlie. Alright, this is really cool. Scary, but cool. You want to hug closer over there. Okay. I will comply. Just because when the wind's from the south, it's going to give you a lift on this side, and who knows what on that side. Okay. That's... Very standard thing for mountain flying, if you didn't know. Right, is fly on the opposite side is the direction the wind's coming, right? Yeah. Track 195, Ogden Ground. Traffic crossing the DIA. This valley is where I grew up when I moved here. From New Jersey. Okay, this is not as scary as I thought. What, passing through here? Yeah. It looked scary to me from the other side, not ever seeing it. Like you could get trapped or something, but yeah, then we open up. All right, this snow still on the ground down here with everybody. All right, now which way? Wherever you want to go. All right. Now, are we uh, normal? Are we utility rated for this aircraft? It's fully aerobatic, if that's what you mean. Yeah, but we don't have any chutes on, so we can't go past 60. All right, this is really cool. Where's, is that a ski area? That, no. There's a ski area here, and there's one behind us, and then there's another one farther down there. Uh, but they look kind of closed. Oh, right. they are all closed. Uh, Due to down. lack of participation. Really? Yeah. Even Alpha's closed. And Park City's closed. They're all closed, except for Snowbird and Brighton. All right, I'm going to do a 180 here to the right. Clear right. Fire speed good? Oh, yeah. You're at about 125 knots right now. Okay. All right, yeah, I like this sports car. So there's a ski resort right over there. You can see the cutout. Uh, yeah, very small. Yeah, that's a small place. They close early because of their low elevation. There's another one up in there that you can't see from here. Then the other one is over on those mountains over there. What's this valley called? It's called Ogden Valley, actually. Oh, Ogden Valley. Even though Ogden's down there, this is still called Ogden Valley. It's named after a French trapper named Peter Skeen Ogden. Way uh, back before the Mormons came. Before the Mormons? Yeah, the trappers were here trapping before that. In fact, that valley over there is called Cache Valley, where Logan is. A cache is a place where you hide all your right. goods when you don't need them. All right, so while I've got the controls... Are you using the rudder, too, or no? I am. I've been uh, making sure that... If I don't see coordination, I'm going more of my feel on that. Where? Oh, it's way over there. So uh, tell me about the glass air while I'm flying around this valley. Well, I started building mine in about... And let's turn the tower down if we can. Yeah, okay. All right, tell me about glass air. Well, I know that the factory, they started building airplanes and selling kits sometime around... Late 70s, somewhere in that neighborhood, late 70s. And I bought my kit 1981, and it took me 20 years to build because right. I got married, started a business when I was about eh, three quarters of the way done. The airframe was basically done, but none of the systems were built yet. 
and I thought I was 80%, 75%, 80% done, but there's a saying out there, uh, 90% done, 90% to go, because the <laughs> systems take a lot of time, especially in a retract, there's a lot more involved, which this is. And I didn't build the engine up, but I installed it. A friend of mine up in Washington State, Vancouver, Washington, which is across the river from Portland, built up the engine. He was intending to use it for his own airplane, but then decided to do an automotive instead. Stock, it's uh, IO360 angle valve, IO360 C1D6. That's counterweighted, but um, stock, it's a 200-horse engine that would have come from a Seneca twin. But it's been souped up with 10 to 1 pistons, balanced, blue burned, flowed, converted. The cam's been modified and also electronic ignition. It puts out on the dyno 245 horses at 2700 RPM. All right, so glass air, I'm guessing glass is for fiberglass? Yeah, exactly. It was the first quote unquote fast glass airplane that was a molded, pre molded kit versus the way the the very easy and stuff is done with the uh, wire cutting the foam to get the shape of the wing and then glassing it afterwards. So Rutan did that first. He did yeah. the, So he would have styrofoam and he uh, put the fiberglass around the styrofoam? Yes. And then, But this is different how? It's, they made molds, okay, the female so. molds, uh, and then laid up the parts inside those molds and then they'd peel the part off. So the, the uh, fuselage was in three pieces, not counting the cowling. The two hazards are seen right down the middle, uh, and then the bottom panel, so those three parts. The wing came, with, with not counting what's inside of the wing, came in three parts as well. The two top halves, and then one complete full bottom of the wing was all one piece with the main spar pre-bonded at the factory. Where's your trim? Right here. All right. We're good. I need to tighten it up. All right, I'm going to do a, another 180 to the right, but I'm going to go steep turn. All right, you ready? Yep. Clear right. I love the way this handles. Yeah, very nice. We're at about, what, 45? Yeah. I did pretty good keeping an eye on out. All right, we're rolling out here. Yeah, I love this thing. This is a lot of fun. So tell me about the performance. What do you cruise at? What is your fuel flow like? All that kind of stuff. Well, I typically cruise between 9.5 and 12.5. Those are the most common that I cruise at. And Rich and Pete and I pull the power, the, I should say, I pull the uh, RPMs back to 2450. That's my sort of pseudo-economy cruise. And at those altitudes, I'm typically burning about 8.5 gallons or so. Rich and Peak and 7.9 Molina Peak. And I'm usually cruising at about 185 knots. I can go faster if I want to spend more money on fuel, but I don't think it's worth the, the money. Yeah, it handles beautifully. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a left turn so that I get that 360 camera over the lake. And so we'll do a nice uh, tight turn to the left here shortly. And this lake is called what? Pine View Reservoir. And right now it's quite low because they're trying to stay ahead of the flood. Right. So they're draining it as much as they can because they know there's enough to fill it probably two more times from the snow melt. Okay, clear left. That's the other ski resort no, right there. nice. That's called Snow Basin. That's where we would have gone. Okay. Because they're still active right now? No, it's closed. Oh, it's where we could have gone if I'd gotten here a month yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would have been a lot closer. Alright, this is cool. So this is some kind of mesa, kind of almost. Here. 
here. Who owns all this land? Is this like oh. BLM? A lot of it's government land. Yeah, uh, left close traffic. Runway heading to Riverdale Road, left close traffic, rear track 668. Ogden Power, this is Blaster 789 or Delta Bravo from the Newark Bay substation for landing at Ogden at 6,000 feet descending. It's Yankee. Terminal 789 Delta Bravo, Ogden Tower, make straight in runway 17, report 3 miles north of the airport. 789 or Delta Bravo, report 3 miles to the airport, cleared for 17. Yes. Call our base, crew track 133. Crew track 668, fly runway heading to Riverdale Road, then make right close traffic. Runway heading, Riverdale Road, right close traffic, crew track 668. Hex 5, turn left to proceed eastbound. So Dan, that was incredible flying in the mountains of Utah. Um, as you can see when you gave me the controls, yeah, I was a bit hesitant to get as close. Um, when you took the controls and flew um, tighter, that was nice. Um, I would definitely call the, the Glass Air a sports car in the sky. Um, handles beautifully, wonderful plane, great speed. The only thing is how tight we are. Well, they improved that when they made the glass air twos and the threes. They widened, oh, they did. They widened the canopy. Okay. A few inches. I don't remember. The a few inches make a big difference. Right. So how? And I think I read somewhere there's there were uh, just over 800 of these uh, glass air ones made. But that would include the tail draggers as well. Right. So about how many tail draggers versus the retractable? I'm gonna guess and say it was probably half and half. What made you decide to get the tricycle retractable versus a tail dragger? Well, the tail dragger isn't retractable. Right. And so I wanted, well, everybody thinks retractable is sexier and, and all right. that, and you get more air speed out of it, And you were a very way. young man at that time. Right. <laughs> so I wanted the cool factor. And, all right, so you run Z-Vision. You guys make taxi and landing lights. Um, and Well, also recognition lighting, but anyway. Okay. So... You know, I've, I've heard a lot of things thrown out there. Lumens, lux, candles. How do you measure light? Well, it used to be in 1948 is when the official change went from candle power, which people are still using. <laughs> but officially it was done away with and replaced with candela. And the numerical values are so close that for all practical purposes, they're interchangeable terms. And the numbers are basically equal. I mean, there is a small difference, but it's so small it's negligible. And so candela has been the predominant term that's been used, even though it, a lot of people still mention candle power. And like I said, they are interchangeable. And um, that metric does have an effect on the total distance that the light will project, but it doesn't give you exact numbers. And you can convert that number as long as you know the distance and you know what the candela, the total candela is coming out the front. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually, there's actually apps on, on, that you can get from Google that you can convert that to, to lux, which is a more meaningful term to tell you how far the light will project in a useful manner. So lux is about how far the light will well, project. Well, it's a total measurement, Okay. but it, it, it declines as you get farther away, which they all, all the measurements do that. But the lux is important because a full moon with totally clear skies, no pollution or whatever is a quarter lux, which is not useful. Anything between a one lux and a half a lux, for sure one lux is useful. You can read a newspaper on a half a lux. Okay. And uh, anything one lux and higher is for sure useful light, and that's how we determine the distance. We d use the one lux as sort of the, the, okay. the, the number. Well, lumens, the, the total lumens coming out of our light is almost 11,000. Okay. Which is a very high number. Um, most of the lights that are out there are going to not even be, not even half of that. Okay. And in fact, the old incandescent units were down, the old 100 watt incandescent units, I should mention, the PAR 36s that are so common. Um, those were producing in the neighborhood of 1,200 lumens. Oh, wow. And you're, so you're 10x. 10 the times end. the number yeah. of lumens, yes. But lumens in and of itself is not a very useful number. It tells you how much light is totally being produced by the unit, but it doesn't tell you where it's going. Okay. So it could be spread out over a very large area, which would be useless except for maybe taxiing right. uh, for what we're talking about. So if you want a true flood, flood light, you don't really want to talk about 
about lumens for that, except for the total amount of light that's being which, produced. Which brings up the other point on your taxi lights. I notice you kind of have, and I work in, I've got a theater degree and I work in TV and film. You've got what looks like Fresnel lights on the, the front of your taxi. So that is to spread it out further. Exactly. That's to spread out the distance. It triples the width, but doesn't change the height of the beam because you'd be wasting light if you made it spread right. vertically. Okay. Again, it's all about where you're putting the light is what's important too. The candle power number can also be used if you don't also mention the beam angle of that. You could have like a laser, you could have a very high candela number, but it's useless because the light beam is so narrow mm. that it doesn't illuminate an area that, that you need to see. And so the beam angle is equally important when you're looking at, uh, at the light in terms of candela okay. or, e or even the lux number for that matter. Because again, with a laser, you could have a very high lux number, but again, the beam ends up being so small, you can't really pick anything out it you know it's illuminating the size of a rabbit you know downstream right. a half a mile I mean that's useless light yeah you've got it so uh, you really have to know the candela number the beam angle number and if you want to know how far it's going to reach as well the, the lux number so lux number what what does that look like to your lights compared to what's out there well we get over one lux at a third of a mile Okay, one lux, a third of the mile. And, and a half a mile, we're about a half a lux. Half a mile, half a lux, what are the others out there doing? They're not even a third of that distance. Okay. We're talking about a couple hundred yards at most. So you're what, 3x what's out there? Um, on, on... I'd say at least, yeah, at least that. Okay, so that is bright. If people wanna know more about it, people wanna buy, what, where do they go, what do they do? Well, the website, it, we, we sell direct. Um, and the website, you can't order through the website, but you contact us with the website with the phone number. And because uh, we like to maintain contact with our customers and not just have an order form. And because well, we can make, make exactly what they need. Exactly. And a lot of times people don't know exactly what they need. And we mm. need to help make sure they don't make a mistake and order something that isn't really what they're looking for. Right. And that's an important factor. All right. So start at the website, give them a call. You guys call back and you figure out exactly what I need. Well, their voltage. I mean, there's a number of factors we need to talk right. about, obviously. All right. Well, perfect. Dan, thank you. Thank you again for an awesome, awesome flight in the Glass Air. Never ridden in one, never flew one. Loved it. So thanks for, for letting us go up. Yeah, you're welcome. I enjoyed it as well. All right.